All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Rakakodash. Even though I'm not in Great Millstone, double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone in time of this truth, peace, blessings, salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, and pretty much I wanted to get into a lesson, all right, um, flowing in the spirit. And I read Revelation, the first chapter, the last time. All right, and uh, I want to go to Revelation, the second chapter. All right, it says, Unto the angel. Of the church of Ephesus, write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. All right, and the seven golden candlesticks represent the seven churches of Asia Minor. All right, you know, uh, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. All right. But this thou hast that thou that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh. Will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the most high. All right. And so pretty much. Uh, the, the, the tree of life. All right. Um, let me, let me see if I can get that. All right. What's the wages to understand the tree of life. You you have to understand, you know, that you have to understand death. All right. What is the wages of sin? The wages of sin is death. All right. So, uh, I believe that's first Corinthians chapter 15, right? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 behold this is when the lord comes back all right when the trumpet is blown all right and the lord makes his appearing on the planet earth on the world stage it says behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed all right so we're not all gonna die all right as as martyrs for yahweh Shai. we're not all gonna you know you know perish and wither away but we're all gonna be changed all right we're all gonna be put into that incorruptible all right, immortal, celestial, angelic body. All right. It says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? All right, because when this happens, when, the, when this mortal puts on immortality and when this corruptible puts on incorruption, what's going to take place is that Hebrews, the eighth chapter, the, the commandments, the law of statutes and commandments dealing with the second covenant is going to be put into the the heart the hearts or the minds of the Israelites. All right. So that's the second covenant. That's the new covenant. All right. The um the law of statutes and commandments of the first covenant, but instead of being kept in human bodies, it's going to be put into the um, the immortal and incorruptible body that we're going to receive. And so it says what? It says, O oh, death. So, so at that point, death will be swallowed up in victory, all right? So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written dealing with Isaiah, where it talks about it in Isaiah, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because see, what death happens because what? It says the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law, all right? The sting of death, all right, is sin, all right? Because, you know, when you die, all right, death is really a transition from this world to the spiritual realm, all right, from this plane of existence, all right, to that higher plane of existence where the holy angels and the heavenly father, 
and the spiritual demon Satan also, but primarily the heavenly father and the holy angels reside. All right. That's that's what death is. But see, it's how the most high can kill you. All right. That 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 the sting comes. All right. It's how the most high Yahweh Shai can take you out. It's how he can put you to death. All right. It's 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 as you're dying. All right. How you die. The reason for that is because of sin. All right. And, and just death in general. All right. You're not supposed to die. You're supposed to live forever. Now, in the kingdom, we, we will be able to go from this realm to that realm. All right. From this dimension. All right. To where the heavenly father is back and forth. All right. Because of those new immortal bodies, they're going to be able to work in this dimension and in the spiritual dimension at the same time. All right. But see, which, you know, kind of like is, is which kind of like is, you know, dying. But, you know, we're going to be able to just go between dimensions without like having to die a human death in order to go to the most high. We're going to be we're going to have spiritual power to just be able to transition there whenever we whenever whenever we so desire. But being in these human bodies right now without those powers. All right. We, we, we have to die, so-called. All right. In order to, to be able to go there. Right. So and, and, and when you die. All right. You know, and, and, and when you die. All right. You have something called what? The sting of death, which is how you die, how fatal, how brutal that 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 death is. All right. And the reason why that is. All right. And and, and why death in general is is because of what? The sting of death is sin. All right. So what's sin? The transgression of the law. The scriptures say what? That the wages of sin is death. All right. You know, it says the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So let me see if I can get that. Con right here, Romans chapter six and verse 23. All right. And it's man, stupid Bible app. Romans chapter six and verse. All right. Uh, 22. Uh, Let's let's see what sin is first and foremost. First John chapter three. All right. What's sin? First John th uh, three and four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. So when you break the law, statutes and commandments, which we, we all do on a daily basis. All right. Whether we try to it says all our righteousness is as filthy rags. But, you know, we try to still keep the law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. And by faith through grace in Yahweh and the death of the cross and by his stripes we are healed. Our sins are able to be blotted out and we're able to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And of course, you know, we show our faith, you know, by our works and, you know, things of that nature. Because, you know, for not the hearers of the law are just before the most high, but the doers of the law shall be justified. In Romans 3 verse 31, do we then make the void the law through faith the most high forbid? Yea, we establish the law, even though keeping the law, statutes and commandments can't save you all right intentionally breaking them is going to lead to your downfall all right thus said the scriptures so now now that we've clarified you know what now that we've clarified that death happens because of sin and sin is the transgression of the law okay uh let's go to romans chapter 6 and verse 22 but now being made free from sin transgression of the law and become servants to the most high ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And that's what we were reading about in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. The mortal putting on immortality and incorruption, thus inheriting everlasting life. So life happens as a result of being free from sin. All right. The, the everlasting life is going to happen as a result from being free of sin. All right. Which is which leads to death. All right. And sin being what? The transgression of the law. So. So the tree of life would be what would be the laws, statutes and commandments. That's why that's why you keep the law. All right. You're allowed to live. But if you break the law, there's laws pertaining to judgment that require you to be put to death. All right. And then if you're just an imperfect human being that can't keep the law 100 percent, that's why all the people on earth, they live, they die at a certain age. And really, it's not has nothing to do with all the people on the planet earth really all the israelites on the planet earth we all live and we all die at a certain age all right 
<coughs> because we're we're in imperfect human bodies that just can't keep the law 100%, you see? All right? So the, the, the tree of life is the laws, statutes, and commandments because you keep the law, all right? There, there's no judgment for it. And, all right, the, the, the uh, you know, the spirit will allow you to live forever. But you break it, all right, and you die, all right? And, and as human beings, all right, we're bound to do that. But Yahweh is going to liberate us from this human wretched form and flesh, all right? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, our Lord, all right? So that's the that that's how you understand that's how you understand what the tree of life is all right that's how you understand what the tree of life is all right so the tree of life is all right the opposite of death which is a result of sin which is a result of breaking the law statutes and commandments all right so if, if it's a result of breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, then keeping the law, statutes, and commandments is the way of life. Meaning what? That that's the tree of life. All right? All right? And a tree also represents, deals with wisdom and strength. That's why it even tells you, all right, in a, in a roundabout way that the tree of life, all right, is the law, statutes, and commandments in the Apocrypha. All right, Ecclesiasticus 19 and 19, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. You see that? All right, because the opposite leads to death by breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, dealing with sin. So the tree of life is the laws, statutes, and commandments. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So you see the fruit, so you see the tree of life is the laws, statutes and commandments keeping them all right but you see uh it says in revelation 22 verse 14 blessed are they that mm -hmm. do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city so right now we do the commandments to the best of our ability so that we can be so that we can have the tree of life which is the commandments but it's going to be put into our inward parts it's going to be in other words we try to like it says judges the fifth chapter rehearse the righteous acts we're doing the law statutes and commandments to the best of our ability so that when the lord comes back and gives us those new angelic bodies they're going to have the commandments a hundred percent downloaded inside of the minds of those new bodies that he's going to give us so it so that that's going to that's going to be that completion of the tree of life that's going to be you know, the perfection of, all right, the tree of life, all right, which we're just trying to, which we're falling short of doing right now, but we're doing it to the best of our ability. That's why I said to, to do the commandments to inherit the tree of life, Revelation 22 and 14, and enter into the kingdom of heaven because you do the commandments to the best of your ability on this side so the Lord can see you trying. So when he comes back, he gives you the, the just he, he just gives you the tree of life, which is the commandments, but, you know, perfectly put into your new body you see it says which is in the midst of the paradise of the most high meaning in the kingdom of heaven because the word the, the word eden comes from the hebrew word idan all right comes from the hebrew word idan which means uh, joy or paradise so the planet earth all right the planet earth was the whole planet earth was a was a paradise all right the whole planet earth was a paradise all right but they they had a garden that was eastward in Eden, and that's that was known as the Garden of Eden. So, when when the Lord, like He says, He's gonna make a new heavens and the, and a new earth, all right. And the former shall not come into mind. The former is what we're living right now, under the so-called white man. When the Lord comes back, He's gonna eradicate all this bullshit with the so-called white man, and the so-called white man's ru rulership and corrupt state of the earth isn't gonna come into mind in the kingdom of heaven because that renewed state of the earth is gonna go, is gonna be so beautiful and majestic. It's gonna be like it was during the days of the Garden of Eden. All right, do you see? But it's gonna be even better because the Lord said He's gonna make the latter house greater than the former house. So the, the, the kingdom of heaven dealing with, uh, dealing with, um, dealing with, uh, you know, the kingdom of heaven is going to be better than the, uh, the garden of Eden, like it was back then. All right. So it says to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the most high. 
All right. So to him that overcomes all the trials, tribulations, this world, all the pain and hardships. All right. You're going to eat of the tree of life, meaning you're going to have the laws, statutes and commandments. You're going to have perfection downloaded into you so that you don't sin anymore, so that you don't break the laws anymore. And that's the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the most High, meaning it's in the kingdom of heaven, which is when the Lord comes back and gives you the tree of life. While he's giving you the tree of life, you're in the paradise of the most High because, all right, he's giving you that immortal body. All right. He's giving you he's making you in his image and in, in his likeness. And you're going to forever be with the Lord. So that's already the paradise of the most High, right there when the Lord comes back. All right. You know. It says, and unto the angel of the church. Wait, let me see how long this is. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. Con, con. It says, and unto the angel of the church in Simrina, write, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Dealing with these gutter rats that are in Israel right now claiming to be Jews. That's why they say Jewish. All right. Because ish is a suffix meaning pertaining to or wanting to be. They want to be Israelites. All right. That's exactly what they are. They're, they are want to be Israelites. All right. You know, nothing but a bunch of war. Well, I, I, I'm not even going to say it because the video could get taken down. All right. So, the, you know, with then they have all those synagogues and all that, you know. All right. So what's going to happen to them? Let's jump a chapter and let's go to verse nine. It says, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. All right. So back in Revelation chapter two, verse 10, it says, fear none of those things which thou shalt fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. All right. And ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Right. So with that, like I was reading right here, in Re Re uh, Revelation three, verse nine. All right. These people that are claiming to be us, that are not us, that everybody looks at as the, the Jews. All right. Which they're not. All right. We are. All right. Um, the Lord is going to make them come and worship before our feet. All right. The Lord is going to make them come and worship before our feet. All right. He's going to make them to come and acknowledge that we're the real Israelites and not them. All right. They're going to have to bow down before us. All right. So Revelation chapter two and verse 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer dealing with the last day's persecution. All right. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. All right. So in these last day end day tribulation. All right. In, in these last in the in these uh, last day uh, tribulations, all right. Um, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to, um, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to, um, you know, try the faith of. You know, the, the believers and this is this isn't going to happen to everybody, but for a select few, they're going to be cast into prison. All right. Some of us are going to have to be cast into prison. All right. That we may be tried, you know, tried in court and so on and so forth. I want to have to be cast into prison. It says and and you shall have tribulation 10 days. All right. 10. The number 10 represents a completion or a perfection. So we're going to have tribulation for a certain and a complete amount of time. All right. It says, be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. You see, you know. So Khan, Khan. You know, so, some are going to be beheaded. Some are going to, you know, be tortured and die. Some are, you know, they might, you know, shoot you for believing in your house shy. 
however way it goes. But beheading is the most famous one that the scriptures talk about pursuant to Revelation, the 20th chapter. But there's other methods too, all right? They can still stone you to death in the FEMA camp. They can still just shoot you with a bullet. They can still, you know, hang you, all right? It can be any way, but beheading is what it talks about in Revelation, the 20th chapter, all right? All right, but it can be any way. All right. But the Lord said, be thou faithful unto death and I'll give thee a crown of life. And then you also have to remember, all right, that, you know, if, if you remain faithful, if you remain faithful, right as you're about to die, the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shah can have it where, all right, the, the, uh, the blades about to cut you, the bullets about to, you know, touch you. All right. You know, they're about to stone you to death and then you just disappear or an angel comes right in the midst of all of them. All right. And, and, you know, uh, take, you know, takes you, uh, takes you out of the situation. All right. Because it also says what in Proverbs 18 and 10, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So that's the faith. All right. That you have to have in these times. Revelation 2 and 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. The first death, like in scripture say, uh, I believe in second Peter, the third chapter, that the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, dealing with Noah's flood. The, the world, the age, the empire, the, the people that was in the ancient world. All right. During the during the days of Noah. They perished because of what? Because of water over flooding the planet Earth and only eight souls were left alive. All right. Only eight souls were left alive during that time. All right. So. That was the first death. This second death is going to be by way of fire and it's going to be thermonuclear fire destroying. All right. America, as a matter of fact, just so you know, I'm not making it up. Let's get second Peter, second Peter, chapter three. And verse and verse five, for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of out of the water and in the water. All right. And, and the earth stands uh, stands in the water because dealing with outer space, the atmosphere of outer space is also considered water, all right? Because water is also in the atmosphere in the planet Earth, all right? So you have the atmosphere in the Earth, all right? And you have the atmosphere outside of the Earth, which is past the ozone layer, which is the firmament that the Bible talks about. And that's also known as the waters, all right? outer space so the, the earth is in outer space all right and it also stands out of the water because the the atmosphere inside of the earth all right all right housed by the ozone layer is separated from the atmosphere that's outside of the planet earth you see all right and it says what it says whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished all right so the world that then was all right the during noah's day and age overflowed with water and perished all right and there was only eight souls left alive it says but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men all right you know dealing with the thermonuclear destruction of america which is babylon the great all right so he that overcometh, you overcome all the trials and tribulations and all the bullshit in this society. All right. You're not going to be heard of the second death, which is the thermonuclear destruction. All right. Of America and several parts of the earth and the fire that's going to come with the Lord himself. That's all the accumulation of all of that is the second death. But you're not going to be heard of the second death. The Lord is going to make sure it doesn't affect you. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which had the, sh the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Ant Ant Antipas was my faithful martyr, 
who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee because... Well, let me just go into that word Antipas. Con, con. It says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. <laughs> he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. Now, I believe that in the Roman Empire, all right, in the Roman Empire, there will be a white stone. So there will be a white stone, all right? White symbolizes pure, all right? So the, the, the white stone, all right, whenever somebody was getting judged, all right, if they were found innocent, they were given a white stone, all right? But if you were found guilty, you were given a black stone, all right? And you, were, you had to die or something like that. So... The, the Lord is using that same analogy here of the Romans, but in incorporating it in a righteous way that to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, manna, all right? And see, the manna was something that came down from heaven. It was a, it was a, it was a food. I believe Elder Apostle Tahars uh, was going into a story about how manna came down from heaven in, in a certain area. All right, of, of the planet Earth with certain people, and they said that it was a sticky, all right, sweet substance, all right, and and that and that was um, that came down, all right, from that came down from um, from from heaven, and was given to us during the time of uh, of Egypt, all right, when when we left out of Egypt, but see the hidden manna, all right, dealing with that hidden heavenly stuff dealing with the kingdom of heaven dealing with the kingdom of heaven all right you know we, we, you know the, there's so many things that we don't know all right so yahweh shai is going to allow us to enjoy all right the kingdom of heaven and all the things that we don't know all right and it says and we'll give him a white stone meaning uh, you're, you're going to be seen as pure and holy all right, pure and holy. All right, not to be destroyed or judged with the rest of the world and seen as pure and holy. And in the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Right, so the Lord can give you a new name in the kingdom. All right, you know, and others, others, you know, may not know. All right. You know. Until you tell them, obviously. All right. It says, and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things, saith the son of the most high who hath his eyes like unto a flame. And that's not too far fetched because you look at the reincarnation of prophets like Elijah, the prophet. All right. That was the. Uh, the the uh, the tutor, all right, of of uh, Elisha. He 
came back in the reincarnation as John the Baptist. The Lord said, look, this is Elias, which was for to come dealing with John the Baptist. It's the same person, but guess what? He had a different name, you see? So it's not too far fetched that the names that we may have now, all right, fucking 5%, whatever. I, I got to wrap this up quickly. But the names that we have now may not be the names that we have in the kingdom of heaven, you see? That's not too far fetched. All right, the Lord can, you know, can do what he wants. All right, so that's why he said right here, and we'll give him a white stone, and in the stone, all right, meaning while you're pure, you're going to have what? A new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, these things say the Son of the Most High, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass, which really is supposed to be burnished bronze. Bronze burned or darkened in the furnace, meaning he was a really dark-skinned so-called black man. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, dealing with any woman. There was a woman called Jezebel, but, you know, also dealing with any woman, all right, coming in that Jezebel spirit, all right, calling herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, meaning the minds, all right, and if you go into that word reigns, all right, is uh, nephros, all right, which means uh, kidney, loins, all right, it says used of the inmost thoughts, feelings, purposes of the soul. You see that, all right? So your innermost thoughts, feelings, purposes and intentions as well as what hearts meaning your mind all together all right so the Yahweh Shema Shai knows who is sincerely following him all right and he knows all the guys that are faking the funk he knows all the individuals that are not sincere he knows the minds of all who are not truly sincere and down for Yahweh Shema Shai the ones who talk shit scoff scorn all right, you know, that aren't trying to follow the doctrine of Great Millstone, which is Yahweh Shah's doctrine given to us. All right, even though I'm not in Great Millstone, I still follow the same doctrine. It's it's Yahweh Shah's doctrine. All right. We're just preaching it and administering it through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, but unto you I say and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not in as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have hold fat have already hold fast till I come. And what do we have? We have the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. That's what we have. So we're going to hold the Holy Spirit. All right, and the Holy Spirit, John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, all right? So we have the Holy Spirit, all right? We have the word, it's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the ability to teach it and break it down, all right? And it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with showing you that we're not equal, and these other nations are going to have to go into captivity and into slavery underneath us underneath the Israelites. It says, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. We're going to have a glow in the kingdom. So how can you say that we're equal? How can you say that all nations can be saved? How can you say all right, the Lord said, "Look, man, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to let it be known. I'm going to let it. I'm going to let you stand tall. I'm going to let you stand stiff. I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to let. I'm going to let them know. All right, that that you know, that that you're their boss. That they that 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 you're the king. All right, that you, that you're the king to them. All right, I'm, I'm going to put you and I'm going to elevate you 
over them to where there's no denying it that you're the people of Yahweh Bashim Shai. All right, starting off with the 144,000, the elect, and the Lord is going to do what? He's going to um. He's going to give you power over them. You're going to have authority, control over them to make them. All right, I believe when you go into it in the Greek, it says power or authority to do as one pleases. You're going to do whatever the fuck you want to them, man. You're going to have power over them completely. All right, you're going to own them. They're going to be your possession. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. All right, meaning what? Meaning a rigorous, strict, and stern rule. And also, we're going to literally have iron scepters and gold scepters to beat you into pieces. All right, like Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. All right, we're going to actually have those. And we'll, because we're going to have spiritual power, we can imbue, we can imbue that scepter with electricity and then dash you to pieces and, or break you to dust all right pulverize you if, if if we want to as the vessels of a potter all right shall they be broken to shivers all right so just like a potter's vessel you take a vase and you don't even try you just drop it and it shatters to pieces that's how these nations are going to be broken to pieces with our strict and stern rulership the rulership of the gods the iron fist of the gods okay they're going to be broken to shivers through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, even as I received of my father and I will give him the morning star. All right. We're going to have a glow, a shine and an aura. Yeah. Undoubtedly, these are the Israelites. And then amongst that. Yeah. These are the elect. Yeah. That's Yahweh Shai. You know. To the point where you can't even look at us. So we're not equal. Not all nations can be saved and receive salvation. Alright. The Most High is not dealing with everybody. Fuck that lovey-dovey kumbaya fucking spirit. Fucking mentality. Yahweh Shai is not fucking dealing with that man. He's going to make it known that we're the special. That we're the holy. That we're the chosen. That we're the sanctified. That we're the ones above all nations. That you, you, huh, that you flow unto us, that you bow down to us, that you serve us, that you fear us, that you reverence us, and you reverence Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and you're gonna be broken to pieces with that rulership, and you're gonna see us shining. The Lord said, "Man, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto unto the churches." And let's just prove that morning star real quick. Uh, I believe it's Ecclesiastes eight and eight. Is it? Uh, no, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter, man, okay, Con, Ecclesiastes 8 and 1, who is as a wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing, a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So when the Lord gives us the, those new bodies, when he elevates us to that level it's actually going to cause us to shine all right even when you got spiritual power before the kingdom of heaven when the lord uses you to lift up that standard in isaiah 59 when the so-called white man comes in with his femur troops and his martial law you're going to be able to lift up a standard against him all right a way to take flight supernatural all right abilities spiritual powers all right so you're going to be able to run through and decimate all these people all right and you're going to have a shine and a glow while doing so, all right, because it takes wisdom, all right, of the spiritual realm, of the spiritual realm, all right, and of, you know, the, the, the protons, the, you know, the molecules, the atoms, the, the you know, the protons, the neutrons, the electrons to be able to, you know, manipulate and control the elements and so on and so forth and manipulate all these different forces, all right, and ultimately what? Wisdom of the spiritual realm. All right, of the spiritual realm, wisdom of the spirits. All right, which is what it says in Luke the tenth chapter. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. But the point is that He's going to give us that morning star, man. These nations are going to see us glow, and it's about our fucking time. It's about fucking time that this happens, man. All right, because we suffered too long. At the hands of these fucking heathens, man. All right. So Daniel chapter 12 and verse three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. 
Like the whole earth has a glow. We're going to have a glow to us, but it's going to be even greater than that. All right. And they that turn many to righteousness as it starts forever and ever, because we're going to be made in the image of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rakakudash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone in time of this truth. Peace, blessings and salutations unto the elect of the nation of Israel, wherever, wherever you may be with that. Shalom.